Esha, you used to be a student here, didn't you? I did. I started when I was, I believe, six. And I'm now 31. Gosh, no, I'm not going to age myself. I'm 31 next. I'm 30. I'm 31 next. And, and we're at the Africa Bantu Sacha School in Hearn Hill. Is yes. it Hearn Hill or Tulse Hill? I'm getting mixed up. I think it's Tulse Hill. Tulse Hill. On the official address, yes. Okay. So, the full time you're a teaching assistant? Yes. And you, you was like teaching here sometimes? I used to teach class one, which is five to seven year olds. We used to do maths, English, science, and a black history teacher. Auntie Michael used to do the black history. But because it became, because of my demands of my full time job, I decided to then switch to doing the food. Mm. So now you're dealing with the food? Yes. And we've got some healthy sandwiches? We've got some sandwiches. Fruit juice? We've got some fruit juice. No fizzy drinks? No fizzy drinks. No, 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 no. And we've got some fruit. It's some fresh fruit. And yes, they get that at quarter two, and they have a 20 minute break, and then they go back to lessons at 10 past. Excellent. And what happens to you after lunch? After lunch, I just tidy the kitchen and um, help around the school, wherever, wherever needs help. Beautiful. You're doing a fantastic job. Well done. Thank you very much. Greetings, my name is Sister Afra, I'm from the Afri Kabantu Saturday School. I am the teacher coordinator as well as the English teacher. Um, why I'm involved in the Saturday School is I was actually one of the first members. Um, Afri Kabantu Saturday School many moons ago um, was called the Next Generation Saturday School. And it was me alongside five other members and we're in 2018 and we have around 47 young people on our books so we've grown exponentially during that time. Um, why I got involved is obviously the background that I've spoken about, but most importantly, I appreciate the investment that I had at the age of 10 years old. And I know that that has definitely benefited me through my own personal journey, um, not only in my academic pursuits, but also my confidence in self. And that is effectively why we're here. We don't just teach the academic subjects, but we also infuse African history because our young people need to be confident in who they are. And most recently, we appreciate with all of the technological advances why we need to introduce coding. So we appreciate that young people need to be able to be in a position where they can think about generating income for themselves and coding is an avenue for that. Um, in terms of the future of the school, we definitely want to do some more partnership working with other African Saturday schools. So shout out to Nubia in particular. We also, when Queen Mother Moore was in existence, was doing some partnership working with them. And that's effectively what it's about. You know, we talk a lot about the things that are happening with our young people, but we need to invest a lot of more time socialising them. And how do we do that? It's not just by our academic institutions such as this, but it's about them meeting other African children, building those positive relationships so that when certain conflict happens, actually they know each other and all of that indifference will actually come out to play. Mm. Did um, this school, did it receive an award for last year? Absolutely, how could I forget? So rise up N-A-B-S-S -S for supporting us throughout our journey and also awarding us um, for our works in our community. You know, sometimes it is tiring getting up on a Saturday. I'm not going to say that it gives me particularly great bouts of energy, but it's something that we need to do. And that draws me neatly into why we think Saturday schools are actually important. Um, we complain time and time again in terms of what's going on in mainstream education. Well, we can't just be complaining about that. We have to be part of a solution, and the solution is creating alternatives and after we come to Saturday School is one of them. Beautiful. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Alright, uh, I'm Ian Cameron and I'm at the African Bantu Saturday School. And um, I, this is my second sleep here. I came here initially um, to do African history. But um, I ended up doing uh, maths because I'm a mechanical designer by profession engineer, mechanical designer, project manager, so the maths I, I, I did and I um, 
In fact, Tamani, who is now doing the science, is one of the youngsters uh, that I did maths with. And um, I, just, I just feel that we have to take responsibility for uh, educating our youth because the system's quite ready to categorize them with all sorts of problems because they are challenging, they are difficult. But I can, I can relate to how difficult they can be because I was like that. I was like that myself in Guyana. But it's just that I went to a private school that was, um, I got sent to a private school by my mother that was run by a friend of hers. And this woman used to flog me regularly <laughs> every day and uh, I, I went home one day because my mother was a teacher as well she taught in um, Harringay um, at a, uh, um, a sort of junior and infant school up there and um, but this woman was a friend of hers so um, I went home and uh, my mother noticed the cane mark on my leg and said um, Miss Jackson's been kicked. I said no no she said, See? I, she gave me some more. She said, Miss Jackson's my friend and she wouldn't beat you for nothing. <laughs> so, <laughs> but when I came to the UK at the age of eight and I had a reading age of 15, I couldn't take too much credit for that, could I? Because I know that I just wanted to run the sea wall and do what I wanted and whatever. And that's why I can relate to some of the more not particularly interested youngsters, etc. But fortunately, we don't have that many of them. Yet. I'm really impressed with how much effort they put in, in their spare time on a Saturday to the work that we, we're doing with them. And so how did you get involved with the school? Well, I, as I said, I, I came, uh, I was looking for, uh, I think African history is the key to our, um, the African Renaissance. And so that's what I was uh, focused on trying to get involved in teaching. But there's always been someone here in that role. And so um, the, the person doing the maths, they were short. So I, I, I switched to the maths, but um, African history is one of my uh, it's an ongoing passion because um, I think that um, that when once you're knowledge base, once you're aware of where 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 we're coming from, then you're going to have a much more um, you're, you're much more confident in your own ability to produce and be productive and, and everything else. And realistically, we've still been very, very productive over the last 5,000 years, despite being literally warred on by uh, Semites, Arabs, and eventually Europeans. So those aspects of history aren't projected and promoted enough. The seminal role of Nubia Kenneth Egypt when it was run by the African pharaohs like Amenhotep and Khufu and Khafre and Menkare and all these great African leaders. Most people, it's not, it's not a part of our knowledge base. How many people are aware of that? Of that? And to, realistically, I wouldn't expect that projected and promoted in, um, within the status quo schools in the USA, UK or anywhere else in the um, diaspora. But in our schools, that's our responsibility. It's a must. That's that 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 that's it's it's, it's, it's a standard thing. I, I mean, when I, I and I, I'm just baffled as to how difficult it is to get our leadership focused on. It's it's so doable. We've got the works of Dr. Ivan Van Sertima, um, we, um, a whole collection of books. Um, Anthony T. Browder is still alive. Um, Asa Hilliard the um, third. Dr. Henrik Clark, we, there's, there's, there's so much of our history that's now available. I mean, it started with J.A. Rogers and um, some of those guys back in the day, but um, Chancellor Williams' book is even still good, uh, the, the, dis the Destruction of Black Civilization. So we're fortunate in that we have access to, to our true history where most, most of our parents, etc., were just their knowledge base was completely filled with either European history or <laughs> or, 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 uh, or slavery. That, you know, that, and sla slavery was, was, was over the last five hundred years. But it's not. It's and even within that period, we, uh, uh, people still produced. We're still being creative, productive, every, everything else. I mean, whether, whether you're talking from jazz to reggae to 
all these things are, are, are from us, even when even when we're pretty much pressed into. So we've got to take responsibility for projecting and promoting far better than we do. Um, what is your outlook for the Africa Bank Two Sider School? Um, well, I I would like to. S we've had a problem in that. Uh, the one set of people here who could leave from the GCSEs, with the eldest class, the 14 to 16, that's always the smallest class. Where I would expect that, that to be the largest class, because I can't believe that in South London, none of the youth need support to get through their GCSEs. Because that's, that's, the, <laughs> that's, the, that's the easily the most challenging part of, it, of, of your adolescence, is, is getting through that first set of serious exams and whereas those lower years they you know they are they're all pursuing SATs. You can't show anyone your SAT grades. And, you know, no one no one no one says well I'm not gonna employ you because you you uh, or I'm gonna employ you because your SAT grades SAT grades were brilliant. But when you've got your GCSEs that gives you the option to go on to advanced levels in subjects of your choice. Or um, at least you, you know that you're literate and numerate enough to start doing things for yourself once you're, you're, once you're at a reasonable standard of literacy and numeracy. So I think that um, getting more of the youth that are going through that really challenging period, that's our challenge to get more of them in and support them because that's what we're offering here. And it's just uh, strange that we can't get that class um, up to where it should be, which is, it should be. Easily our biggest, not not the not the smallest. Yeah.